Welcome to game week three of the 2024 Six Nations. Starting to look ahead to the matches this weekend as the action gets back underway, pondering the question, who's under the most pressure? Which team do you think is under the most pressure going into their third fixture of this year's Six Nations? Now suppose, at any level, it's elite sport, there's always going to be pressure and it depends what you mean by pressure. That's up to you. Are you talking purely about getting results? Are you talking about performance as well? In this video, I'll touch upon both of those things. So welcome back. Appreciate you joining me as ever. Comment down below. Let me know who you think, which side is under the most pressure. Like the video and make sure you are subscribed to the channel as well. So let's go through the teams. Let's go through the various matchups. The first game coming up this weekend, Ireland hosting Wales. I don't think it's either of these teams in terms of an answer to the question of who is under the most pressure. Because Wales, despite the fact that they've lost both of their games, it feels like they've proven a certain amount in those matches, which is strange to say almost, and actually is a real reflection of some of the good stuff they have done. When you consider they've lost both of those matches, two matches that actually they could have won, it's very possible we could be sat here looking at Wales and thinking they've gone two from two. Blimey, what could they do against Ireland this weekend? But they've lost both of those games. But I think there's just a, a feeling of positivity in terms of the players coming through, the revitalisation in that team, given the fact of where the game is in Wales, where the regions are, the injuries they have, the players they've lost in terms of experience. Understandably, there is a a feeling of positivity about this Wales team, despite the fact that they have lost both of their matches so far. So I don't think they're under a huge amount of pressure this weekend because they're facing an Ireland team in Dublin who are just so good at the moment. And actually, I think if we're talking about pressure and we're talking about Wales, in my opinion, the pressure comes for them most likely on the final weekend. Presuming they lose to Ireland and they lose to France, I think it's then that final game against Italy. That's where there could be pressure on this Wales team to get a result for the time being. I don't view them being the side with the most pressure on them at this moment in the championship. And likewise for Ireland. Now, to a degree, there's pressure because there always is when you are the side being chased, right? Ireland now are the team everyone expects to go on and win the Six Nations. Most people expect them to go on and do another Grand Slam, back-to-back -back Grand Slams. They're playing so well, they are the hunted. So with that comes pressure. But I'm not sure it's this game. As problematic as Wales can be, and as we've proven so far in those games, the second half against Scotland, the first half against England, this Wales team, despite being pretty youthful, inexperienced, they are capable of causing problems for teams. I think they will be able to cause Ireland problems, but I don't think they will be good enough to truly challenge this Ireland team at home. But I think Ireland could end up facing the pressure to get that result more against England at Twickenham. I think England are nowhere near good enough at this moment in time to beat Ireland, but in terms of just being away from home, that sort of challenge, I think, is where this Ireland team could be, could be, and I might be proven wrong here, put under more pressure in that game. So for Wales and Ireland, I don't view them as being the teams under the most pressure as we head into the third round of fixtures. But let's get on to Scotland, England, the Calcutta Cup. In terms of one of the rivalries of the championship, I would say over the last few years, it's been one of the best ones outside of Ireland and France and the quality that those two teams have thrown up in terms of the genuine rivalry, the history, the way in which Scotland have become the dominant team in recent years in that rivalry when once it was England that used to always win has been fascinating. But it's also this match, a reminder, I think, of one of the, the great things about a Six Nations is how week to week, game to game, the whole narrative around a team and around their championship can change week to week. In that you look at this Scotland team now, and I think there is pressure on them because of the fact they lost against France. So they've won one, they've lost one. And what are the aspirations for this Scotland side now in this Six Nations? They've got the huge challenge of facing Ireland away on the final weekend. So they have to win this weekend, it feels to me. It feels like there is pressure against an England team at Murrayfield, where they have been the dominant force recently, as I mentioned, to continue that trend. 
because if they lose this game, then all of a sudden you're looking at this Six Nations and you're looking at this Scotland team and the conversations are going to start to turn towards the fact that they've gone backwards, that they've regressed, that they aren't in the position they were previously, that they're being overtaken by England, for example, the team that they have had the upper hand on, that they're no longer the team closest to France and Ireland possibly as well. There's all sorts of different narrative and storylines that could come out of this result. That's why I feel there is pressure on Scotland this weekend. And actually, in a sense, I feel like it's a compliment to where they are and to where they have been because they have been dominant over England. It's not that long ago that you wouldn't have looked at a Calcutta Cup game and thought it's the pressures on Scotland to get the result here. The pressure would have been on England because they were the team that used to always win that rivalry. It is a reflection of how well Gregor Townsend and this group of Scotland players have done to change that, to change that narrative. But also with England, what sort of pressure is on them? With France and Ireland still to come, who, as it looks like at the moment, are going to be their two toughest games, Ireland at home, France away on the final weekend, how much pressure is there on England for this game? They haven't played particularly well so far, but they've beaten Italy, they've beaten Wales. Scotland is probably the last team in this championship, in this year's championship for England, that people will look at and feel that they might not be favourites, but they have a chance to get a result. They have a chance to win more games than they're going to lose this Six Nations, which would represent some form of progress. Or perhaps, and I can understand this view of thinking, pressure for England isn't so much in the result. That is, of course, part of it. It's in the style of play. Because whilst England have won, and whilst we can see what they're trying to do, new blitz defence that's been spoken about loads, how they're attacking slightly differently, we understand those things. Do we need to see more? Do we need to, does it need to be more convincing than we've seen so far? And does that bring itself a certain level of pressure? And to execute that as well, away to Scotland at Murrayfield. It's one thing doing it away to Italy. It's one thing doing it at home to Wales. But it's a tough atmosphere. It's a tough venue for England to go to. Scotland fans will be right up for it. So I think there's pressure on England as well. I think Scotland and England are under pressure, perhaps for very different reasons, but coming into this match. And it just adds extra spice, extra narrative to what is always a great fixture in terms of the Calcutta Cup. But my instinct is when we talk about who's under the most pressure, I think Scotland or England are possibly those two sides. But as I said at the beginning of the video, you can comment and let me know what you make of it. Let's finish up with France against Italy. I'd say a similar thing to France to what I just said about England, in that France at home, most of us are going to expect them to win that game against the Italians. So I wouldn't say so much the pressure is on the result, although, of course, naturally, when you're expected to win, there's a pressure to win and all that stuff. Is it similar to England, though, for France, that the pressure is on their performance? Because they lost to Ireland, got absolutely blown away on the opening night. They then beat Scotland, but first of all, were fortunate with the TMO decision at the end. And even outside of that, they haven't been overly convincing so far, the French. For me, I still have big question marks over that team on whether there was a World Cup hangover, how badly affected they have been from that, but also how for a fairly long period of time, I think, they were a side that continued to get results without necessarily always being at their best. And if their performances have continued to drop off, maybe France are in a tougher place than many expected, many predicted, may, many thought ahead of this Six Nations. They have not been convincing. They were not convincing against Scotland. So there is a pressure on them to perform and to show a better level of performance, the sort of level of performance that I think we associate with France over the last few years, when everyone talked about them being one of the World Cup favourites on home soil, there was a reason for that because of the style of rugby they could play. I don't think we've seen it so far. So a pressure on them to perform better, an element of pressure to get a result, but I think against Italy, they will be good enough, despite not playing at their best at the moment, to do that. So I don't view it as pressure in that sense. As for Italy, I go back to what I said about Wales. I think the pressure for them will come on the final weekend. I think it's most likely both of those teams end up not having won 
heading into the final weekend. So there'll be a huge amount of pressure on that game. But what have we seen from Italy so far? Some good stuff against England in the first half. Go, gave themselves a lead. Were then poor in the second half. And then very hard to judge them away to Ireland because that is just not where success in this championship will be decided for this Italian team. So I suppose the pressure on Italy is to continue improving their performance. We've seen elements of it, but under a new coach, continuing to make strides forward rather than it being any sort of pressure to get a result. Let's not forget that at home last year to France in the Six Nations, they weren't that far off beating France. What a result that would have been. So I, I think it is an Italian team that can cause France problems. i just not sure we've seen enough to convince me that they're able to beat them on French soil. Could be wrong. It'd be amazing if I was wrong, but that's my feeling at the moment. So that's kind of where I am, my general thoughts on all six teams. There's pressure for all of them, of course. And there's pressure for some about results, for others about performance. But who do you think is under the most pressure heading into the third week of this Six Nations? I'm going to say it's Scotland. I think it's between Scotland and England. You could probably sway me either way to go for those two teams. But I think it's Scotland for the various points I outlined earlier in the video. Comment down below. Let me know what you made of it. And yeah, like the video, subscribe to the channel, all of that stuff. Massively appreciate all the support, by the way. It's awesome when a Six Nations come round. The World Cup was class last year because it was seven weeks or eight weeks where everyone was so engaged in and looking for content and you see the interest in the channel and the videos and all that sort of thing. So I really appreciate all of your support. Thank you very much. If you are a returning viewer, welcome along if you are new here for the first time. And yeah, the like button on the video just gives it a little boost and the subscribe button is what makes a huge, huge difference. If you, uh, if I can earn your subscription, then that's massively appreciated. So let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.